Hi, friends. Welcome to the Tulips and Roses podcast, the show where we talk all things self-improvement. My name is Madison and I'm your host and I am so happy to have you here today. So we made it, everybody. We are in that little limbo area between Christmas and New Year's. Christmas if you celebrate it, New Year's if you celebrate it. If you've traveled this holiday season to see friends or family or you were able to get away, I hope you had a really amazing time. But honestly, while traveling or seeing friends and being in a different environment, it is really hard to stay on track because your everyday routine has changed. So it happens. Today's episode is going to be how to get back on track after your holiday season. A little bit of motivation and tips and steps to get you back to your routine and back on the same level as your goals. Right now is the perfect time to listen to this episode because you still have time before New Year's. It's still 2023. You can get back on track for the beginning of 2024. This is also the perfect time to be listening to this episode just in case you are still on your vacation. And if you're watching this a few weeks after it's been released, it's still going to be the beginning of 2024. There's always a time to get back on track. So the fact that you're listening to this episode is just proof that you want to get back on track. So let's start off with the steps. Step one, we are going to debrief ourselves on everything that we did during our time off, our holiday, whatever, that did not bring us closer to where and who we want to be. The important part of this journey is acknowledging the past behaviors that you engaged in and accepting that they happened. You can't go back and change the things you ate, the people you saw, the things you said, the things you did. You have to acknowledge that those things happened and then work to accept them. So you're going to do your own personal debrief. So say things to yourself like, yes, I did this thing or yes, this thing happened. Yes, I said this thing. As an example, it could be I had too much dessert after every dinner or I skipped more than one day working out. Those are just examples I came up with that are on my list. Everybody's goals throughout this journey is going to be different. You need to tailor how to get back on track based off of what is best for you. I also want to put a little side note in here. I'm going to be talking a lot about, you know, food, healthy habits, healthy eating. So my intention is not to be triggered to anybody who has sensitivities towards those topics back to the point you cannot change the past you can only change your future so once you've acknowledged your part in all of this yes you did do the things that brought you farther from your goal or yes you did x y and z you can then move to improve or mend the issue at hand by working on what you're gonna actually work on in the future these behaviors you partook in may not have been ideal. However, it is not what you did that is going to keep you from reaching your goal. One weekend is not going to change the rest of your life realistically. It is what you do after you go off track that will determine your success. You need to use whatever you did to get you off track as fuel to get you back on track. If you start feeling shame or guilt or any type of negative feelings towards yourself over what happened during the holidays, I mean, generally it can be a really great holiday, but your goals probably include something a little bit different, like maybe not drinking or maybe not eating super heavy desserts or something along the lines of that. So whenever you start to get feelings of shame, guilt, or anything negative about yourself, I want you to remember how this feeling is. Really just work with accepting it and know that those feelings that you feel are probably going to come up or they're more likely to come up if you did the same things over and over and over again. So that's how we're going to use them as fuel because we don't want to feel like this. We don't want to feel guilt. We don't want to feel shame or any type of negative feelings about ourselves. We're the best. Like we, <laughs> we're our number one person. We need to be feeling as good as possible, as much as possible. You got to think to yourself, like, I don't want to feel like this again. And it's helpful to write that down. Or again, you guys, we need to be journaling. That should be one note that we bring into 2024 we want to journal and keep track of how we feel and try to replicate those good feelings as much as possible and see where we feel these negative emotions and see what we can do to get to the opposite of that the only way you are going to get in the way of your goal is if you let these behaviors continue into a pattern i'm going to use the example of skipping a day at the gym if your goal is to go to the gym and be active and try to get at least some activity in every day You're going to want to not make sure that skipping days at the gym is a habit that you're picking up. The goal is not to beat yourself up over not staying on track. You don't want to do that. You just want to identify the problem. You want to debrief yourself on the feelings surrounding it and what caused you to go off track. Was it being around your family? Your family is super stressful and then that caused you to start to eat things you wouldn't normally eat or just try to seek comfort in things that are outside of yourself that are not healthy. Things like that. You don't want to spend more time scolding 
holding your own behavior than the time it takes to get back to a good place. Again, make sure that you are writing this process down in your journal and tracking exactly what caused you to stray from your health goals or your business goals, your mental health goals, your relationship goals, any type of goal. Make sure you are journaling about it and you are tracking these things. Not only is journaling and tracking your feelings and your journey an important part now, it's going to be extremely important in the future when this sort of situation happens again. When you go on vacation or you have a holiday or a holiday comes up, you're with your family. Knowing what happened, why, and how you strayed from your goals will help you to create a prevention plan in the future. Step two is goal setting. After you've done your personal debrief, you can then move on to writing your goals. Your goals are going to be pretty simple here. It's going to be the exact opposite of the behavior you embarked on or participated in that you didn't love and they took you farther from your planned original path that you created for yourself. An example, yes, I had too much dessert after every dinner. Your goal becomes have the suggested serving size or only the amount that fits my macros next time. Or my debrief says, I skip more than one day working out in a row. Your goal now becomes, I am not going to skip more than one day in a row working out moving forward. And if you do not stick to this structure the first time or sometimes you go off plan, keep trying. Same with whatever happened during your vacation. You have to keep trying when you do not reach those goals that you want to achieve. You don't need to skip meals or go to the gym two hours a day or meditate the entire day to make up for what you didn't do or what you felt wasn't getting you closer to your goals. Make the decision to move forward in that moment. Our future selves would focus on what we actually can do. And what we can do is move forward. What we can't do is change our past behavior. You need to fail before you fly. It's hard work to get back on track, but you won't be disappointed if you put in the effort to get there. Remember, today is your day to start fresh. Eat right, train hard, live healthily, and be proud. Setting up little reminders for yourself either within your phone can be very, very helpful. You can also write out note cards or save some in your notes application, screenshot it and put it as your background. Reminders and affirmations are very helpful to keep handy whenever we feel overwhelmed. You could say this feeling is only temporary. I'm grateful for all the time off and the good food I got to eat while I was away. Even though you got off track, there are still some positive things you can think of and bring forward with you as well. So with this, when is the best time to get back on track? And the honest answer is right now. As soon as you ask yourself that question, whenever you decide to, it's the right time. You don't have to wait for the next Monday or the next full day. You can start if it's 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 9 p.m., 8 in the morning on a Thursday. It doesn't matter. The best time is now. Make your next best decision in the right direction now. So step three, make it me time. Give yourself the space to get back on track. Plan it and make time for it. You hear me talk about this a lot, but you have to make time for things in life that you want to do. It's easy to fall in the trap of giving yourself excuses on why now is not the right time. But in reality, you have to make the time. So make the time to get back on track now. So example of making the time, you can make the decision today to get everything together so that you can wake up an hour earlier tomorrow and start the day with yourself. If you're just coming back from vacation today and there's so much you need to do, an hour earlier may sound like, oh my gosh, no, I'm going to be up an hour later. But it, it could really help. I find this really helpful if you are coming back from vacation and you have to work the next day. Just getting up an hour earlier can help you get a head start on a lot of things. However, it can also help get a head start on your mentality for the day. You can complete a single task or a task that is important to you or your well-being during this hour. If you're going back to work on the day you want to wake up an hour earlier, you can meditate in that hour. Have your morning tea, read, get some sunlight and some fresh air. And for the love of yourself, stay hydrated through the process. Make sure you're having enough water to keep you feeling good. This is a huge tip that not a lot of us think about first and foremost. And honestly, if you were on vacation, I don't know about you all, but when I was away, I was visiting family. I was not drinking like even half the amount of water that I normally would drink. I don't know if it's because I didn't have my big cup to drink out of or what it was, but I was just not drinking water. It was like, what did I even have? Coffee. I had so much coffee. Our bodies are probably really thirsty and hoping that we're going to replenish this hydration at some point. So let's, let's make the active effort to do that. During this hour, 
you can also get into your routine earlier. Going back into your normal routine an hour earlier can also take some stress off of you in terms of timelines. If you're going back into the office right after a vacation, sometimes it needs to be a slow start. That is totally okay. If you wake up an hour earlier, then you're going to be able to give yourself that time allowance in order to get certain things done a little bit slower or take a little bit longer on certain tasks. Think of how else you can show up for yourself right now today that will help you show up for yourself later on or tomorrow. Make your routine me time. You can easily do this through the next step. So that's where me time comes from because you have to remember your why and that is step four. If you want to wake up earlier and you want to get back into the routine, it's gonna be very hard. So you have to remember your why. And number four really just is the invisible thread that goes through everything that you do. It's remembering why you are doing certain things and this is going to be the biggest push it is the person in the future that you are creating today through your actions and thoughts so remember your why and romanticize your journey along the way be grateful for your journey and the opportunity to start a fresh new day and if you're starting and it's not the beginning of the day be grateful to start this new moment now exactly when you decide to honestly you have to choose your level of hard listen it's really easy to give yourself certain allowances for when you have time off or for when you're on holiday Holiday. It's easy to sleep in, to skip the gym, not read, have too many indulgent things. I'm not saying that you can't do some of those things sometimes, but when you remember your why and you have that always on the top of your mind, it really puts things into perspective on whether or not you should take the easy road or the hard road. And even though it is easy now to give yourself certain allowances rather than sticking to the path that will lead you closer to your goals, it's going to become harder in the future. It's going to be harder to go down the same path that you're going on when you give yourself all of these allowances. If you do it once in a while and you're able to snap back and get back on track, that's fine. But if you keep making it a habit, it's going to just eventually get harder and harder and harder to come back to the place that is in line with the future version of yourself. When you go down that path for so long and then you eventually re-realize your goals and want to continue to pursue them, it won't be impossible, but it will be so much harder. Don't let an indulgent weekend turn into an indulgent month. I think that's the biggest key takeaway here. It can either be hard today, you might be tired, you might be like, I had a cupcake for breakfast, or you may, may be like, I didn't go to the gym this morning, or I didn't read at all, I didn't meditate, I didn't pray, I didn't do any of my normal things that keep me in line with my future self, or it can be hard in the future. What will it be? You have to choose your hard. Remember, never quit. If you stumble, get back up. What happened yesterday no longer matters. Today is another day. So get back on track and move closer to your dreams and goals. You can do it. It is only when you understand your why or your purpose that you'll be more capable of pursuing the things that give you fulfillment. You have to find a way to get back to and remember those things constantly. This is why you hear everybody preaching so hard about vision boards. They truly help. They help you instantly connect with your reason why. Why are you doing this? Why are you going to the gym six times a week? Why am I only going to have dessert once a day? Because of my why. Exactly. This is where the, this person, this version of myself that I'm trying to create is the person that would only have dessert once a day. Your vision boards can help you through a variety of different situations. But I want to do an episode specifically on how to create a vision board and some tips and little nuggets of information that I think might be helpful. If you want to hear that, let me know. And the best way to do that is through Instagram. Also, give this episode a thumbs up, whether you're on YouTube, Spotify, anywhere you're listening or watching. So then with your vision board, make sure at least you're having a vision board. If not, Again, we got to make time to create one or at the very least have one single picture. Also, you can use Pinterest. There's so many different ways to create a vision board. I like having all of the different aspects of who I want to become in the future, just all on one single page that I can look at that I can really just connect with whenever I'm feeling low or, you know, feeling really upset about how far off track I got over the weekend. With all this being said, you guys, you can get back on track. Just make the decision to start today. Start now and don't don't let it go on any longer. Don't let your bad decisions and I want to say bad very loosely because I don't think they're bad. You shouldn't be scolding yourself. I'm not scolding you. Don't let it go on any longer. Get back in the same lane as the future version of yourself. This one was a quick one, but I think I said all that needs to be said. And I'm right here with you all along the way. Don't be afraid to send me a message. We can chat about some things. 
can leave me a comment. I read all of them. I hope that this episode helped. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, you searching and listening to this episode already means that you are thinking in the right direction. So keep going. I hope you all had a great holiday. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.